Hopefully we're ready. <coughs> okay, we're recording. <laughs> All right. I'd like to go ahead and open up the agenda for the Warrington Board of Aldermen meeting for Tuesday, April 5th, 2022. If you would please rise to say Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brittany, are you doing the introduction? Yes. So tonight I wanted to, um, if you'll stand up, Janet, she has actually joined us as a crossing guard. She's going to now be at 47 in Walton, where we've had a vacancy. Um, and she began with us on March 28th. So I'd like to welcome her. Welcome. Welcome. Thank welcome. you. So I'm going to be nice and drop this huge hint that I love seeing an introduction of employees again. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Be nice to see more <laughs> introductions of employees when we hire them. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Yep. Thank you. Next, we have the consent agenda. We have the regular meeting minutes for March 15th, 2022, and work session minutes for March 15th, 2022. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy. Second by Alderman Crump. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jackson? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Next will be public comments. We ask if you have any comments you'd like to make, please come to the podium. We'll give you five minutes to speak. If you state who you are, please. Good evening, Roger Tucker. Uh, tonight you guys will be voting on the uh, revision to the city code ordinance 34110. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you guys for moving on this topic so quickly. It's not too common to, to see this uh, uh, in the public sector of something to move through so quickly. Um, I think this is a big step for the uh, city and we should look at it closely to make sure that we're getting it right. Um, I do have some concerns after reviewing the proposed revision. Uh, first of all, the length and complexity of the entire code. There are literally seven pages or 2,402 words of codes to read through, whereas the city of Washington accomplished the exact same thing with less than two pages or 715 words. I know you guys at the work session mentioned that the definition should probably stay the same. Um, we all know that definitions are really important when we're enforcing laws. Um, but that was not but what was not brought up was that the state recently in 2020 revised their definitions of, of the UTVs and recreational off-road vehicles. The changes increased the width from no more than 67 inches to 80 inches. And the unladen dry weight was also increased from 2,000 to no more than 3,500 pounds. Back when the city wrote its original policy, it did, not, it did align with the state, but I cannot see a reason why the city would not want to fit the same definitions as the state with this revision. The state revision was necessary to encompass some of the most popular side-by-sides being used today. This Can-Am Maverick at 72 inches or this Polaris Razor at 74 inches, which currently is inside of this definition revision. Then we start to dig into the very complex and confusing code. First, A5 in the code, the UTV, hopefully you guys are taking notes. First, the A5 in the code, the UTV or ROV should be properly insured and such proof of insurance shall be specifically listed in vehicle reference by the serial number, year, and model. Uh, and this is where it gets tricky. And shall be available upon request of law enforcement at all times while being operated on the city street or highway. 
Um, we want to make sure that the city does not violate any fourth amendment rights by allowing a city officer to believe they can stop someone for the sole purpose of checking to see whether or not they have insurance. City of Washington handles this properly and just requires that the owner has that insurance maintained and proof with them. I would propose to amend this to align more with a more clear intent of needing to maintain insurance on the vehicle. I, I want to make a correction. Oh, excuse me, that. sir. Unless hey, I have more I, than five do minutes. I, I'm actually the one that directs this. Yeah. Go ahead and allow him to speak. And then. Do I have more than we'll five minutes? We'll have rebuttal. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Do I have more? Oh, does it me or him? Five minutes. No, go ahead and speak. Okay, thank you, sir. And we'll uh, hear the attorney's rebuttal afterwards. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Then we move to C4, no person shall carry passengers in excess of the maximum number of designated seating for the UTV or ROV. Uh, no more than two passengers per bench seat shall be allowed. Um, all side-by-sides with bench seats that are classified as three-seaters or six-seaters have the appropriate number of seat belts. I propose to remove the no more than two passengers per bench seat. C5, I believe, just needs some clarification. No person shall operate a UTV or ROV on state or federal highway except any state highway with a posted speed limit of 35 miles an hour or less, and then only to directly cr cross. Um, the, cross a portion of the state highway system which intersects a municipal street. This prohibition shall not apply to UTV or ROV, ROVs operated on 47. I think we want to clarify that this only applies to numbered highways and does not apply to Highway M, U, AA, or any other lettered highway where the speed limits inside city limits are greater, greater than 35 mile an hour. I would suggest amending to read numbered highways for clarification purposes. Then we move to the inspection, or section D, inspection, permits, and registration. This section is complex and packed with unnecessary, unnecessary steps which could be simplified into a one sheet process filled out at City Hall when applying for a permit, similar to Washington. This one sheet is all that is needed when applying for a permit in Washington. It covers UTVs, off-road recreational vehicles, golf carts, all in one sheet. All is needed is to provide your driver's license, proof of insurance, and to pay the $15 for the three-year permit. There is not anything left up to interpretation by the city chief of police as stated in D1A, identifying information for the UTV or ROV as determined by the chief of police. There is not a statement that has to be notarized as D1D states, a notarized certification by the owner that the UTV or ROV meets all requirements of this section. And you do not have to go through an inspection process excuse me, where it is unclear who can do the inspection or what they can charge. I would suggest this whole registration process be revised to something like Washington that covers all the bases in a much more user-friendly process. In closing, thank you for your willingness to amend this ordinance and allow these vehicles on city streets as many other municipalities have already done this ordinance is by far, one, by far one of the most complex worded and lengthy permit processes of its kind and I feel it absolutely does not need to be that way. If the largest area, if the largest municipality in our area can make this possible with less than two pages of code and one simple page of registration, we can do better. Do you have any questions for me? Questions? I don't believe so. I, I, I've got a question. I, I yes, actually sir. do have a question. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> My question's, uh, you're stating that you don't believe there should be any kind of inspection on a one of these vehicles that are, uh, have used, that I currently use going up and down hills and uh, mm -hmm. across creeks daily, mm -hmm. that I'm, I should not have that inspected <clears throat> to get out on the city highway or our city uh, streets on a vehicle that possibly could have some issues with it? Is that, is that your statement? That is my statement. Okay. That would be the same as if 
four by four vehicle that goes four wheeling on a weekly, or you know, on every weekend, and then it's traveled on the on the highway that doesn't. It, it travels inspection. on a. It does travel on a county highway. It does not well, it, travel it, on our city streets, and that's where right. that's what this is all about. Right. It's not about the county. It's about the city. Of Warrington, and so right. that's uh, that's well, that my, is my question to right. you is just the safety of my constituents and my colleagues' constituents getting on a four wheeler <coughs> that's never been inspected. Okay, uh, a side side. That's right. that would be my concern. Right, and that would be the same as me buying a brand new four by four truck, going four wheeling every weekend, and then driving it. Down but it has to you have to have it inspected and licensed Correct. every two years or every year. A brand new vehicle. It yep. doesn't matter. Either way, no, you're going to no, come to an inspection or you're going to have to come to, at one point, you're going to if you're going to license yeah, after 150,000 miles. But, yeah, I, I see your point. But okay. well, that's no my other point. municipalities are requiring that, including Washington. I apologize. This is not any other. This is the Warrington community, and that's what I'm concerned about, not Washington or anyplace else, sir. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Attorney? <coughs> Mayor, if I can just clear up one, I think, misstatement or misunderstanding of Mr. Tucker. Um, I have spoken to the city of Washington, and what they do is they classify their vehicles as all-terrain vehicles, as motor vehicles under their code. So the same requirements for insurance, they can stop you and ask for insurance under their ordinances because they just fit it into their category of it. As to the length of it, one of the things we talked about in the work session was Wright City has it laid out individually for each type of vehicle, and that was your preferred way to do it, to keep them separate, so that if you had a, a instead of sorting through, what we originally proposed was putting golf carts or low-speed vehicles, UTVs, and what was the other one, off-road highway vehicles in the same section, but you guys wanted it separated out so that you could say, well, here's a section, because you know, someone's not, somebody's gonna come in wanting to license something, I, this is what I took from the logic. You can point them to one section, they're not trying to separate between UTVs, uh, off-road vehicles, and, and uh, golf carts. And this is more like what Wright City did than what we did. The other thing, as far as the definitions, one of the things we thought, and I think staff did a great job of, if you look at the ordinance as it's printed, we put pictures of them in there that's going to be part of our code so you know people can look and say okay what do i have provide a little bit more guidance for them uh to know exactly what category they go into um, so we can make any changes that you guys want but you know the the we tried to take all the feedback and we worked with staff a lot to make sure it fit in what you guys wanted on the work session and i think the one complaint we had and we made a revision was I guess they have an inspection day. I think it's in Jonesburg where the chief inspects it or Wright City where it's one day a month. We talked about doing something like that. I think Wright like City that. had that. Yeah, Wright City where they inspect it, but the chief inspects it, but they do it that way. And ours is one page. So that's all I wanted to do. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, we are not having our staff do the inspection. We're asking someone that truly understands and know vehicles to do those inspections, correct? Correct. Okay, because we don't, I don't feel, I, don't, I think my colleagues and I all felt that would be a burden on staff to ha uh, have to make that call or make that decision. So, thank you. The only thing that our staff is going to be doing is <coughs> when they bring in the application, our staff will process the application, and then the chief will actually verify the VIN number and the type of vehicle. Um, and then the chief will physically put the sticker on the back of the vehicle. So that's the only thing our staff has involvement in. Thank so you. I guess I do have a little bit of a question and concern with the width. I think if we state that at the end, if we want to, if everybody chooses to adapt this ordinance, um, it can be stated in the very beginning to modify that and an adjustment of any accordance of anything that meets a UTV standard besides the width. Well, what I would suggest is is that may be correct. We we checked it against the city of Washington, and I pretty sure we check this against the most updated statutory definitions. If you guys want to adopt this tonight, if it has been updated to increase it, we'll bring an amendment back for the next meeting where you can add it if you want to do it. I, I, I the, the only question is how do we write that amendment on the ordinance? No, and I get that, but I guess my concern is just like any other city, um, there are things that sometimes slip through that need to be modified and changed. So I think that is something we need to look and be concerned with because I don't want to 
deny somebody just based on a principle of three inches wider than right. Yeah, yeah. The weight, be normal. Length of it should yeah, be I like <clears throat> I like the length of it. And thanks, <clears throat> thanks, Roger, for, for for coming tonight and bringing those up. I know you weren't able to make the actual work session because you had a ball game. I felt like we did listen to everybody that showed up, including you, and tried our best to give something. And I know some of it's more than other cities. And I think that's just our way of being extra safe, if you want to call it that. But I'm, I'm okay with the width being wider and stuff. So I'm good with that too. <clears throat> Chris, I have a question. So, if do we as a city, do we have the authority to allow them to, to the prohibition to be on 47? Do we can't absolutely. Allow them. You can prohibit it on any road you want. So my question is, if we are allowing them on 47 with an increased speed limit of 35, why isn't Veterans Memorial and Double A M. Why aren't those incorporated? Can can we include those two? Are we just he limiting? Something? He said something about that. Well, highways that don't but, start with numbers. Well, it doesn't like that, right? it doesn't say that in here. And as I read it, you're going to be limited to where you can go on M M. And, and if you're going to rural camp, say if you're going to head out to Highway U off a of subdivision off of Highway U Wolf Road or something, you're not going to be op able to operate on M U. Veterans Memorial or any of those state highways. Some of them have less than 35, but others don't. So what we have here is so M would be 35. UTV or ROV on state or federal highways, except that any state highway with a posted speed limit of 35 miles per hour or less, and then only to directly cross a portion of the state highway. So it's not based on letter or numbers. If it's less than 35 miles an hour, you can operate on it freely. If it's over 35 miles an hour, you can only cross it to go to the uh, where it intersects with the municipal street, but then, but then right and it, after it that. says it shall not apply to UTVs or ROVs operating on Highway 47. So we're allowing them on 47. Yeah. So what was the, what was he stating about? I'm sorry. What was you stating about the uh, numbers and letters of highways? Yeah, come back up to the microphone so <coughs> we can record it. <coughs> so I guess there's different. Rules right, when, for those. right, when doing my research with um, City of Washington, obviously you guys know I'm a big fan of that, um, but they, they actually have it to where it's only Highway 100 and Highway 47 that restricts their use, and then all the lettered highways are like acceptable to be traveled upon. So This doesn't restrict the numbered highways, driving well, on it at all. So is, is It's just for low-speed vehicles, which is required by statute where it's restricted. So let me find that again. I was, just, I was just wondering what he was meaning. Yeah. I didn't know if that was just so for that municipality or... So it's, like a state I guess the, the clarification is, are we classifying Highway M, Highway U, Highway AA as state highways? They are. Well, they are state highways. Maintain yeah. Correct. State, yeah. And so at the entrance of the North Service Road and Highway W, that is a 45 mile an hour speed limit. Highway AA is a 45 mile an hour speed limit and Highway U is a 40 mile an hour speed limit. So with the state law of being able to travel your side by side in the state within three miles of your residence, you would not be able to travel into town on those highways as the states. Number one, that's not what state law says, but we can clarify this. That's what you were. To so, say, so we Missouri can clarify this. So Missouri State Statute 304.33, I guess number three, recreational off-highway vehicles operated within three miles of the operator's primary residence. This provision of this subdivision shall not authorize the operational uh, operation of a recreational off-highway vehicle in municipality unless such operation is authorized by such municipality as provided in subdivision five of this subsection. So three miles. You have three miles within your primary Only if residence. the city authorizes. That's what I said. Yeah. Right. So you cannot travel into the city if so i live off drive for it <clears throat> i can legally drive within three miles you know and if i were to have to get onto highway w or if i lived outside w i legally wouldn't be able to travel inside of city limits because of that restriction but you wouldn't be able to do it because we can't dictate anything that happens without well outside of the city limits anyway you have to go to the county commissioners to get that but right well if well Following state law, I'd be if I was in three miles. No, that's it's you legal and lawful. City limits and then then limits once I got into city limits, correct. With this, I would not be able to travel on Highway A, Highway U, or Highway or Double A U. 
the way this reads. So if you could just because of the speed back. limits over 35, I get what you're saying. Well, I Correct. think what we could do, to your point, Alderman Schultz, is we could just take out Section 5 because we're not we're not limiting UTVs or ROVs on any road, right? right. That's the intent. Right. Yeah. No, so that's amendment to take out all. Section 5 altogether, and then there's no restriction in there. So it would be any anywhere within the city limits. Yeah. Including yeah, state highways, any city, any city street or state highway. Yeah. I would go with that. I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. And the only I, caution I would have is maybe Interstate 70, but <laughs> <laughs> you're getting on 70. That's yeah, I don't know if anybody's that brave. So, yeah. Um, so but, yeah. they run smart cars on well, there. there well, if we're, if we're, I'd rather <laughs> run mine than a smart car. So. Council, if we are taking that out, we don't have anywhere where we would restrict Interstate 70. Should we put that in there? But I mean, that would. We can add Interstate 70 in. Sure. Do we need to? I don't think I you don't guys. Think we, I don't think you could authorize right. one of these to go on Interstate 70. So we can't of say what can't go there. No, that's what he was saying. Yeah, to block so. them from going on 70. Yeah. But that, if you go on 70, that's you. Well, I'm sure there'll be somebody who tries. Yeah. Right in the city. I hate to say it. I, I I totally I agree. And the. On subsection D uh, E, where it says certificate indicating the UTV ROV, I think the at the end of that, the last should be subsection D five, not four. Is that correct? D five. I'd like to change that to five. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to amend it. Subsection D5, D4, I mean, you. Oh, yeah. I said, yeah. Yeah, it's D5. Okay. I'll answer it. All right. Anyone else make comments? Not seeing me, we'll move on. Next will be Board of Alderman comments. Beautiful day today. Glad to be here. Hope everybody got out to vote today. Number three. I was. I was number four. Woohoo! No, you were. My wife was. <laughs> you must be voting a different place. I believe the loading is from the old who <laughs> is not filing or running again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I expect to probably make tons of nominations or at least submit? Approval to certain uh, ordinances. Is he messing with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got broad shoulders today, my friend. Broad shoulders. All right. Uh, for mayor comments, let's do for uh, appointments on park board. I believe Jacob Brown to replace Corey Tobias with the term to expire June 30th, 2023. Kelly Madden to replace Tiny Mirth and with the term to expire on June 30th, 2023. Corey, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not butchering this because I think I did last time, Medeas, is that right? To replace Lindsey DeGraff with the term to expire June 30th, 2022. Uh, any questions on those? I'll entertain a motion to approve the mayor's appointments of Jacob Brown, Kelly Madden, and Corey Medeas to the park board as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Quarter. We'll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullen? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delloy? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Next will be discussion of speed limits in town, and I will turn it over to Alderman Quarter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's been brought to my attention more than once uh, about the speed limits on some of our uh, major, what I would call, corridors, uh, those being 
uh, Pinckney and uh, Warrior Ridge as an example, not only there. Uh, those speed limits are currently set at 20 miles per hour. I just want to get a little feedback from my colleagues on uh, their thoughts on that. And my, <coughs> or what I'd like to see us consider is moving that to in streets like that, and especially there, uh, to a 30 miles per hour and then uh, a 20 mile an hour flashing light while school's in. So other than just adding a, leaving them at 30 miles an hour uh, only when school is not uh, in session and bringing up, putting a, uh, some type of flashing light <coughs> at 20 miles per hour during school. Uh, school and and as far as how far back we need to uh, set that uh, that would be I'm open for discussion on that as well. Is it pink? You said Pinkney and what was the second? Uh, Pinkney and Warrior. Warrior. Avenue. No, just in general, all I I think there's some other streets that uh, I may defer to staff to maybe take a look at and consider the way they look compared to those two streets because I travel those streets often uh, and there are other streets within the uh, community I think that could be moved to a uh, from a 20 to a 30. It's hard to go 20 down those roads. Well, and that's <laughs> one of my uh, biggest issues or, or statements is that you're I think everyone's riding their brakes down through those and, and I think it may help with a little bit of the uh, congestion that we have on those streets uh, during busy times as well. I think if we had a list of roads <coughs> that we could talk about, I'd be open to it. Yeah. A list of all the speed limits for the streets would be nice huh. to know which ones are what. So I guess my main question is how, we, how do we go about getting the street, the street set at speed limits currently? How do we set the speed limits? Can you pull up the code? It's all set under our I'm, Why I'm asking that is because I believe the public who's watching needs an education on how we set sp speed limits by on ordinance. roads currently. Yeah, by ordinance, and it's all in one place in the code. There's an appendix that lists the separate speed limits. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not suggesting through neighborhoods. I'm ex my suggestion is, is those thoroughfares that the main what yeah what we would consider main roads uh, maybe snow what I'm, I guess snow routes or something like that <coughs> those two roads I wouldn't see an issue with that I think we would have to do some code revisions with the flashing light I think we'd have to add something in there sure <coughs> and I think if we consider this and look at this I, there's no question uh, that we would need a uh, flashing light of some sort during school hours. Right. I, 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 without a question, we we want to keep our students safe. I think that <clears throat> I think the flashing light might be more difficult. I don't see a problem with increasing the speed on those particular roads and places. There's there are driveways that intersect those, but with our school district with Mondays off but you get some makeup days on Mondays I think that would be kind of difficult to set that light on which days it would and I don't know how you would trigger that but I don't see a problem with the speed increase uh, I where I've uh, all I uh, where I've seen that at is actually at St. Charles West they have one that's triggered there lots of municipalities have there. so I was just curious how they. Like yeah, I, I'm not. How do they, how do they turn it like? So we had a makeup school day this Monday. How would they? How would it be flashing on I'm, this Monday? Yeah, I'm Instead sure of just that a blanket when school's in session. I guess they would have yeah. to know schools in session. Yeah, I don't but, know how that program works. Yeah, that would be. <clears throat> what we can what we can do is we can take our GIS system and highlight all the roads in different colors per the speed limit, so that way you kind of have a visual. You know, we have a list of all the roads, but. Uh, sometimes it's hard to look mm -hmm. at just the list, so we can we can highlight a map up, and, and that way you have a yeah, visual I don't think of we need the, by color what like speed said, limit. The neighborhood roads, just like the main ones, maybe. Feeding yeah, them. we already have a map that has all the um, all the roads on it already. So all we got to do is classify it by color, and it's not that big of a deal. So but it'd be something to visual look at. You're right, saying yeah. though, yeah, I think that a little easier to, to decide. Be more than sufficient for me. So I think uh, basically we need a work session to set up what roads we'd like to look at and I think that would give us time to consider which roads in our wards 
um, we would like to consider have consideration revision on as well as it'll give our city staff time enough to research flashing lights to see if they are a manual set or if there's something that is a timed or what be it and how they address it and how they adjust it to be able to educate us when we come together for things like that fair enough thank you no problem <coughs> any other questions or comments on that oh yeah I'm sorry I, I believe you wanted to sir if you don't mind coming to the podium and stating your name and we'll give you time to speak Ron Minimar, and I was invited by the young lady here. And uh, my concern is the streets in uh, uh, east of 47. And I wrote down all the streets, stop signs, children play signs, and everything. And the signs haven't really been changed since 1985. We built a house on Steinhagen, <coughs> if you're familiar with that. So we still have neighborhood watch signs which I talked to Sergeant Ledbetter and he wasn't familiar with those signs no more not even if they're in play anymore so that's another thing I was looking at but I was trying to get speed limits to speeders to stop speeding because uh, there's 78 houses when they built Truesdale subdivision it goes through Banner and a lot of people go out that way and they go around through Steinhagen so it all those streets are coming back to 78 houses and in our area there's 177 houses okay so I'm just asking the city to look at it and see if they can change it but there's also a cross bridge if you're familiar with a cross bridge I mean I know it's kind of small to see but there's no crosswalk there there's two signs on the curve that has children but they're pretty far back but to get from the bridge to the sidewalk there's nothing for the kids, you know, the, the yellow marks or anything. So somebody's racing around that curve, there's no, no pathway for the children. You know, they're, they're on their own. So that's one thing I brought up. And then... Um, so I went to walk bridge across the tracks? Yes, it, it used to go up to IGA, which yeah. you buy the church there. Yeah, and they rebuilt the bridge. But there's no crosswalk on Steinhagen right there. It goes to Wabash, mm -hmm. and it's right around the curve. What's they, these? Do have a, they have a sign for the curve, but it's further back, so, yeah. you know, I don't know how people think when they're driving, but I don't, I don't think some of the people coming through there are paying attention to it now, because um, I wrote a definition down, uh, speed limits help your speed, which in turn reduce the amount of time it takes for you to react to changes in the flow of traffic, and also makes it easier for you to stop your vehicle if needed to, so... That's the definition of a speed limit sign, according to Google, which could be, you know, I don't know where they get it from. But so what is, I'm sorry to ask a question. What is the speed limit on Stadium? Yeah. It is 20. 20 through the whole area. It's okay. 20, okay. 20. And then some of, the, some of the roads only have one sign. Some have two. But if you only got one sign, when you, if you're headed towards the sign, you see it. But if you're headed, you know, the other direction, all you see is a back of a sign, so you don't you don't really know, or you're not paying any attention. And then um, another thing, the federal government has an issue that they don't agree with slow children signs unless you're going to do them on multiple streets, because by putting one sign out, you're kind of saying that only children play here, but nowadays there's children on every block, so you're kind of looking at putting a sign, you know, everywhere if they're going to put one because they put one on banner because it's so much traffic now and there is children right there but there's children across where I live there's children that play behind me you know it's like they're everywhere you know and a lot of them don't walk the sidewalk we have a nice sidewalk going from the bridge all the way down Steinhagen down to Memorial Parkway but a lot of kids just walk in the street so that's an that's I don't know how you could cure that problem you know <laughs> I've talked to the police and there's really nothing they they could do about that you know it's you just got to be careful when you're driving you know just are you advocating to drop that speed limit even more than 20 at that no. area or just signs? put signs no. up? Um, I would say just go back and look to make sure we have all the signs in place okay and I don't really want to drop the speed limit but what I would like to see is two stop signs 
that are not anywhere else but you have a three uh, a two-way here a two-way there and then everything else is a four-way but at Steinhagen and Ashland there's only one stop so when you come around the curve and you're headed down Steinhagen you got a straight shot for like almost two blocks before you get to a stop sign and that's Banner okay so then when you go there you're going down to Flora Street <coughs> which is the next four-way and then you get to Memorial Parkway so if you had two stop signs there that would stop some of the speeding around the curve and also people coming up the other way can't get enough power to run right through the curve and make the curve you know so I'm looking at the two stop signs and the children's uh, marking I mean I I think the children's marking is the biggest thing you know so but then uh, our world has changed so much um, I was telling her um, you know we got FedEx we got Amazon we got UPS and Saturday I was out cutting some brush and I took a picture of the van from Amazon they parked sideways in the middle of the road right by in front of my house got out the door went two houses down delivered their package and then they, they drove off I mean it took you know seconds probably or minutes but if somebody was racing down the road that that's another issue but I don't, I don't know how you would control delivery stuff you know that's that's an that happens so much now I mean, my neighbor they get deliveries every day from three different people I, I don't know but uh, yeah that's what I wanted to bring up the two stop signs and the children's thing is the most important to me uh, the play children signs I mean if you're gonna do one then you probably should do multiple multiple ones but you know it's kind of like everybody's coming off of 47 that lives behind us and they're traveling the same roads that we do but they're not concerned about when they pass the house you know or anybody's house they're they're just off you know and uh, since you brought up the ATVs uh, there's dirt bikes that have been going up and down the road now and also four-wheelers uh, there's a neighbor they just got two four-wheelers and the kids are riding through the through the little ditch that we have like a culvert and through their yard they're not going out the driveway they're just everywhere so I don't, I don't know how you fix that but that's that's a four-wheeler that's not ATV that's you know it probably shouldn't be on the road but uh, that's all I have to say. I mean, any questions? If you no. want to, as I said, does somebody have a picture or a copy of that? If you want to, if you want to keep this or this, you're glad. I'm glad to give it to you. Either one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep that brandy or Josh off the system. Well, you didn't take what? that long. I put symbols for everything. I probably went beyond. <laughs> <laughs> My wife said I shouldn't talk too long. <laughs> and she said they not to make her embarrassed. <laughs> they always say that. <laughs> thank you all. Hey, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you took Gary off spot. I don't mean to point, but I'm glad to meet you. So I didn't. I didn't know who you were at first, but uh, yeah. yeah, you're in mine and Alderman Schultz. Our ward. It's the second time I've been here. The first time I was here, I was the only one in the chairs, and nobody said nothing to me except for the security guard. He asked me if I had anything dangerous. I'm like, no. So I wrote down everything, and nobody said a word to me. And I thought that was kind of, you know, not a bad thing, but uh, I kind of felt left out, you know. And I didn't come to talk. I just come to listen and write stuff down and see what the city was all about, you know. I'm turning 68 Friday. No, no, no applause. <laughs> I don't want to, but uh, I had. Uh, I'm going to share some stuff with you if I still got time. Sure. Just a second. Um, I had a little bout with cancer and I was scared to death and until you get cancer you don't know maybe the next day or year if you're going to be around to see your grandkids whatever so I've decided since I'm negative to change my life and change things around me so this is one thing I brought up I, I thought I would bring it up you know and try to change the street good or bad I was going to talk and then but I think the two stop signs and the children should have a pathway even though you know we had the virus and the kids really didn't go to school but they still walk and there's a lot of other people besides children that cross there you know, because they go back to there's apartments in Truesdale um, I think there's a playground back there now that they built you know so I'm pretty sure we should have a crosswalk there. Some kind of safety besides just the sign, you know. All right, thank you. Ron, thank you, thank, thank thank you, you Mr. Mayor. What Mayor. I'd like to say <laughs> is that you didn't talk too much, and uh, we appreciate 
I think all of us appreciate any time one of our citizens come in and has questions and feels free to discuss that with us, and that's that's what we're here for. Yeah. We may not always agree with you, and we may not always do what you ask, but we are here to listen. Well, I've been married for 43, 43 years. <coughs> I understand we don't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was so delighted that she invited me. I mean, she didn't really know who I was, but I called I called uh, Mr. Ledbetter. Oh, I mean, Sergeant Ledbetter, sorry. So I don't know. Not me. Not you. So I, I didn't know who Sergeant Ledbetter looked like. My wife said he's just big. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming. I'm assuming. A in a good way. In a good way, Chief. In a good way. <laughs> and uh, also talk to the street department. Is that be me? I talked to you. That you? Okay. So I just brought up. So you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Absolutely. Yeah. So and I went and looked at him, and we, we could use some speed limit. I mean, I'm not sure. trying to change nothing permanent. You know, I'm just trying to make a, a difference. You know, and then. Uh, Larry, yes, I agree with you because my kids went to the high school for years, and they're the youngest one's 33 now. So, but Warrior Ridge, we go over there when her, my wife's parents were in the nursing home, and 20 miles per hour is too slow. I could fall asleep. <laughs> it's like, please, please don't on, do that. Let's go. But I agree with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? All right. Next we'll hear from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Good evening. The first thing that I have for you tonight is tourism recommendations. So tourism met on um, for their monthly meeting in March, and they are recommending approval to pay for the Warren County Farmers Market advertising in the amount of $558.16. They have $300 in it allocated to this in their budget. However, they would like to take $258.16 from their contingency fund and go ahead and pay for the full amount that they submitted. Anybody have any questions about that? Nope. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the tourism recommendations in the amount of $558.16 for the farmer's market. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, I'll save, uh, I'm sorry. First motion made by Alderman Collins, second by Alderman Crump. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Collum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6 to 0. The next thing I have for you is just to mention the fireworks bill that's later on on the agenda. Um, that is to change the shooting of fireworks to July 3rd and 4th from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. and July 1st, 2nd, and 5th from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. and then again on midnight, December 31st, which we had discussed previously. So that's just a code change later on the agenda. The next thing that I have for you is a municipal court and treasury bill. So this was a result from OSCA, which is the Office of the State Court Administrator. So now that we are with Show Me Courts, they had sent, OSCA had sent out somebody to just basically do a um, audit of our documents and how we're doing things. And so these changes were their recommendations. They recommended that we make these few changes in our code so that it all ties with the state. So that's also a bill later on in the agenda. And the next thing that I have is the UTV bill, which we all discussed just a little bit ago. I don't know if you want any further discussion on that. I will note that the low speed vehicle and this permitting process are both gonna be $10 for every two years. So that's the only thing that I think that we didn't discuss earlier. Any questions on that one? The next thing that I have is the sale price of the grave sites. That's also a bill later on in the agenda. This is one that we had discussed in our planning meeting. Currently our grave sites, um, the cost is 200 for inside city limits, 400 for outside city limits. And so now we're adding outside Warren County for $800. So uh, this is just the code change for that. So it'll be 200, 400, 800. Brandy, I'm a little slow, so I'm gonna, can I back you up? Sure. Just one? On the UTV, uh, $10, two years permit, and do we have a number and place that those can be inspected at this time, or will that be released at a later date? 
So we don't have, we did not list a specific, a specific place for them to be inspected. It just that it has to be inspected by a licensed inspector. Okay. So if they get it inspected in Wright City and it's a licensed inspector, they just have to sign off on the inspection. On our set of, of what yes. we requested to be our checklist. Correct. Okay. And our checklist is just a front page and it's the everything, whether it's, you know, whatever they're getting inspected and then the um, initials and signature and I think they have like some kind of number. Their, the inspection, inspection, their inspection station number. Okay. Correct. I, I just want to make sure everyone realizes that there's a $10 two-year permit and a whatever the cost would be from those people for two years as well. That's a two years. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I, I gotta, I'm gonna bring something about that. I know we were talking about this before but I uh, think Chris said he was gonna look into seeing if we could like cross do with the other municipalities like Wright City, Truesdale, and Jonesburg, were we able to do that? I think that was gonna take a, some, a quite a bit of time. So we were under the impression we wanted to go ahead and get this in our code so that way we could go ahead and get the process going. And then we would work on work trying with to that. coordinate with Wright City or really start with Truesdale. But we, we worked on a lot of revisions to get it to where we thought the work session was on the code. So we'll work on that next okay. for sure. I think so. Um, we were running to was the amount or time, not the amount, the time of uh, when the inspections need to be done and if they're replacing stickers and you're going to have multiple stickers for whose past inspections or not and past inspections are done, the qualifications for each town. That's, I mean, obviously it's going to take more of a work session for us to all get together and talk I about I just wanted want to check to make sure we were still... I think there's like three three major points we'd have to talk with them, but... Yeah, they would all have to agree to it yeah. as well. Yeah, correct. So. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks. Anything else? Yeah. Alderman Jasper? <clears throat> the last thing I have for you tonight is the insurance renewal. So this is that time of year where we do our uh, renewal of all of our health insurance, dental, all of those. So at about 4 p.m. this afternoon, I got a, another offer from the insurance company, and you guys all have a copy of that, where Cigna is now dropping it to a 2.54% versus their original five. My recommendation is still on the health insurance is to still go with United Healthcare because they are coming in at a negative 1.4%, which saves the city almost $10,000 a year. Um, that would be my recommendation for the health insurance. For the Hartford Vision and Life, those are all remaining the same, so there's no change in cost on those. The dental, I would recommend that we change, or we keep the dental with Cigna. The renewal, I believe, was like, I don't know why I can't find my piece of paper. The renewal with that one was very minimal, so I would recommend that we stay with Cigna on that one so we don't have employees having to change all of that, the dentist and all that stuff, because it really isn't that much. Um, so that would be my recommendation for all of those. And then the other thing that I would ask is that if we, because we are saving the almost $10,000 on the health insurance, is for us to implement an EAP program for our employees, which is an employee assistance program. Um, it helps with just basically personal or work-related issues. They can see counselors, that kind of thing. If the city would pay for that, for that benefit, for our, all of our employees, we're talking, it would be approximately about $1,233 a year. And that would give every employee five visits. It would also give each one of their spouses or um, five visits at all of their family members. So it could include a child or anybody. So I think with the minimal cost it would be for us as the city, I think it'd be a great benefit for our employees. And that would be done at the same time, this renewal. Is that through United or Cigna? Uh, that's uh, actually through Hartford. Uh, Hartford, oh, yeah. Thank you. So do you need that added as an amendment to what your suggestion is, or is that included? In yeah, that would be my recommendation <coughs> as a whole, is to stay with Cigna for dental, add this Hartford, and change our health insurance to United Healthcare. Do you, you don't need a motion for each one of those do you no i don't i mean if we're going to stay the same on all of them except for adding the eap i can just add that in the motion change in health we're changing health <laughs> um, changing yeah i'm sorry i can add to go with your recommendation with the addition of the eap is what i can do so it'll be just easier all right 
Any questions about that? No. And then I'll entertain a motion to approve the recommendation of the City Administrator for Health, Dental, and Life Insurance Renewal with the addition of the EAP program through Hartford. So moved. Second. I'm sorry, who was the second? Who'd you get? So motion made by Alderman Cullum, second by Alderman Jaspering. We'll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Motion passed 6 0. Thank you. Next word from Director of Operations, John Struckoff. First thing I have for you tonight is uh, the water meter bill. Um, we were reviewing the code um, for our, our water meter locations and what the city actually maintains from the main, the water main to the shutoff or and or the, the, the meter pit. Um, before it's always been in the upgrade policy, so this is just making it more clear that this is what the city maintains. Anything past the meter pit is on the customer's responsibility. It's just an amendment to the code just to, to, to show that. Is there any questions on that? If not, that's a bill later on in the agenda. Just for clarification, that's from the, from the street to the home, correct? So the water, kind of the water main or the water service that the city maintains is from the water main, the water main, obviously, and then the service from the water main to the shutoff and or uh, meter pit, and including the meter pit. From the meter pit to the house is the customer's responsibility. Okay, that's it's, that's what I want to get. I want to make sure that's very clear that from that meter base, yeah. from the uh, meter, from yes. the street, typically the street, yes, to my home is uh, is my concerns. Yes. Okay. So the a couple months ago we changed it to require meter pits. So this is this is further clarifying that that we we are going to be responsible including the meter pit but from the meter pit to the house is the customer's responsibility so if there's a leak or any anything wrong with that section of pipe that is the customer's responsibility anything in the meter pit and to the water main is ours now uh where it gets a little gray is that has to be placed properly per code the water meter pit has to be placed on at the edge of the right of way if it's on the customer's property we have no right to go on their property to fix the stuff so we have to make sure and that's a you know a building inspection thing but we have to make sure that that meter pit is in the right of way so clarification mm -hmm. me if you would that meter pit is where that the meter is for my home correct so it's not going to be in or on the house any longer is that what you're saying correct the so, new code that we passed a, a few months ago, we're going two meter pits in the yard. Okay, that's I just and, mm -hmm. and we're not doing anything with the meters that are in the home currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, not not currently. We're not. That's what I'm saying. So, currently, so if in it's that in case, your house, we're not moving it out mm -hmm. to. Uh, in, the pit. in that case, we we will maintain from the water main, including the water main, your service line to your shutoff box, okay. the, the valve box in in your yard. That's what the city maintains. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure we got that very clear for yep. everyone. Yeah, in the in the code, if you read the code, it's it's spelled out um, very clearly to whereas before it was not, and that's what we're trying to to solve with this code change. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next thing I have for you tonight is the citywide cleanup. Uh, we have that scheduled for May 14th at the fa fairgrounds. Uh, we have everybody lined up to do that. However, the <coughs> recycling portion of the TVs and the computer monitors, uh, the cost of that has gone up drastically. So we're proposing to charge uh, each monitor or TV $20 a piece, um, and that would get us, um, it, that would pay a portion of the bigger stuff, and it would pay all of the smaller stuff. So we're still, we're still taking the burden of some of that cost, just not all of it like we have in the past. That's our proposal. Um, I don't, I, we just need a okay to go with that. What date? Or a discussion or questions, I'd. What date? May, uh, 14th. May 14th, it'll Times. be seven to noon. Seven to noon. Thank you. At the fairgrounds. And this is separate from what we do with Grace Hauling, right? So Grace Hauling, we were under, um, the, when we did the contract, they're gonna do a one large pickup for us. Yeah. 
um, I'm sorry, two a year, we're going to do two citywide cleanups a year because we'll, we'll take the electronics and stuff, whereas Grace Hauling won't. And they, they're limited to number of items picked up at the curbside where we can take larger loads of, of trash or whatever you have. So What we tried to do is alternate it to where it's a quarterly. Every quarter percent. we're going to have a pickup, yep. Throughout the year. Any questions? Grace will be involved in that. They'll be handling the, the trash and the dumpster part of that. So, Excellent. Thank you. Do you need approval on the 20 I don't think we need approval on that. I, it's just a, that's what we're going to go with. So we'll, we can start advertising that. If you, so. Yeah, if you can advertise that in several ways, please. I appreciate yes. it. Yeah, we're going to push it out. We just wanted to okay the, the charges first. So, and John, real quick, I'm going to put you on the spot. I know I already asked you. I got people asking me, can you give us an update on the sidewalk, North 47? So we've been in talks with the contractor. Um, the the our CMT our, our engineer has kind of taken over the the talks with the contractor. Um, this past week, they still have not given us an updated date that they're going to be back to work on that sidewalk. Um, and of course, they can't give us a, a completion date. And they're really pushing the issue of of not giving us that completion date. So our our. Our CMT, our engineer, uh, has threatened that if they don't give us a, a date in a timely fashion, we will, we will start doing liquidated damages. <clears throat> Excuse me, liquidated damages. So that has been put out there. Um, they have until April 15th to give us a date that is mutually agreed upon. So, so is there a liquidating damages within our contract with them? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, perfect. Absolutely. Okay. That's just the completion, right? Are they going to fix the washout spots, or they have to? They have to. Okay. Some of the washout spots are bad enough that they're going to actually have to report. take the the pack concrete down. out, repack it down, and report concrete. So that that cannot be our burden. That's not our fault that that washed out like that. So, so I understand CMT taking over negotiations on that, but if it comes down to litigation, is that when our lawyer gets involved, or is that when CMT will be taking care of that? So I've. Yes. So I've I've also have Modot since that's cost share project. I have Modot. Uh, I've been in constant contact with them, giving them everything that that uh, you know the the going back and forth with everybody. So since it's cost share, they kind of have a say in it too. Uh, you know, and, and some of the rules that we couldn't do liquidated liquidated damages over the winter. Um, that's a Modot thing. That that ended March fifteenth, I believe. So. We are more than capable to be pushing the liquidated damages at this point. So we gave them a, a good date. We need a date to for completion. So um, we're working on it. Uh, we're doing everything we can to get them back out there. I, I, I believe they got some safety devices up on some of the washout areas. Yeah. I, I heard. Okay. That they was had, one they of had the. shut down pretty much from uh, wherever that road is there. Willow Road. Uh, yeah. All yeah. the way to where they stopped. Yeah. So. What do yeah, we owe them? I mean, financially, were we at? Did we pay them in full? No. This okay. No. All right. I just want to make sure that was the case. They've they've been paid for everything that they've done so far. They they turn in monthly payouts, so they haven't turned one in in quite a few months because they haven't worked any. So. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. I have. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Yep. Next, we're from Finance Officer Dana Belaska. Good evening. You have before you a list of claims. Claims totaling six hundred and four thousand nine hundred and sixty-four dollars and five cents. Were there any questions related to that list of claims? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable in the amount of six hundred and four thousand nine hundred and sixty-four dollars and five cents. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Delaware, second by Alderman Crump. Roll call vote. Alderman Cohen? Yes. Alderman Gaspring? Yes. Alderman Delaware? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. The next item before you are the February financials. So you'll notice that the general fund is running about $5,000 above budget in total in revenues. Um, kind of a mixture there. We have sales tax. It's about uh, 233000 above budget in the general fund. So that's about 12% above. Uh, again, that included December sales in those February numbers. So that percentage of budget may, may go down a little bit. Traditionally, we see it more like 9% or something. So um, a little bit of a spike there. Um, you also see um, 
some things come in a little bit below budget, things like uh, the court fines, uh, police fines, court, court fees, things like that. That's about 137,000 below budget. Also currently our permitting is about 65,000 below budget, again with just slower housing starts. In general fund expenses are about 304,000 below budget of which about 188 are related to wages and vacant positions, uh, again, some of them previous vacancies. In the water and sewer fund, revenues are 190,000 above budget. So we have water sales and sewer sales above budget. Uh, and again, a little chunk, about 112,000 of that water sales is related to a catch-up bill with the uh, Coke production plant before it uh, changed over. You will notice that uh, the uh, connection fees for water and sewer are below budget, uh, again, attributed to the slower housing starts. In the operating expenses in the water and sewer fund, 71,000 below budget, uh, again, 42,000 related to some vacancies through the year. So uh, the, the rest of the expenditures we expect uh, for operating supplies to spend the balance by the end of the year. Were there any questions on those February financials? Okay. All right, thank you. Next, we'll hear from the aquatics director, Lisa Kramer. Good evening. You have in front of you the aquatic report for the month of March. Um, we had a great March, We, in my opinion. We had 3,238 people come through the doors for March of which 1,162 of those people were there last week, um, which was March 21st for spring break. Um, that was the most people I've ever seen at that pool in my almost three years here, so I was very excited for that. Uh, we renewed or sold 41 memberships in the month of March. We had 33 people attend our splash and pajama party um, last month as well. We have now got um, the splash camp into our computer system and we have opened up registration for camp. Uh, camp will be uh, starting July 11th and going through August 5th um, and it will run from 1130 in the morning until 5 o'clock at night with a after camp care from 5 to 6 for the campers who need to be there an extra hour while their parents are still working. And um, this Saturday is our extravaganza carnival at the Aquatic Center parking lot. We will not have it in cars this year. We will be able to get out and do the carnival games in the parking lot. We have a airbrush tattoo um, person coming as well as a stilt walker and fire breather person to entertain you while you're waiting in line. And the Easter Bunny will be there to get your picture taken with as well. So it will be a great time for everybody. We have about 120 people signed up right now. Um, and if they sign up before Saturday, they'll be able to be in line for the Easter Bunny. Any questions? No, good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Ground Maintenance Director, Brad Boozy Cruz. Uh, good evening. There we go. Good evening, you have my uh, monthly report. Uh, we, uh, maintenance has been a big priority on uh, stuff. Um, other uh, cleaning, uh, getting the parks and stuff ready. Uh, setting up ball fields. Soccer fields, and getting all that uh, ready. Anybody have any questions on that? Snow, snow removal hours in March. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, Brad, on uh, just over by the aquatic center and the uh, and the golf area there, is that did we kind of clean that road up after winter? As far as uh, it, it seemed pretty bumpy the other day when I went through there. Is that? That's Ms. Uh, Mr. Giever's uh, thing. They have been coming out and taking care of it when okay. they uh, when we because it, it washes so bad every after yeah. every rain. Uh, they have to go out and if they, if they don't get to it, if it gets too bad, we have them come. At most time, if, if it's not too bad, we'll take tractor out there and try to blade it back. But it's uh, kind of. Uh, well, I was just thinking about 
if the, this weekend's coming up, there'll be a lot of traffic coming through there. So it make we'll see make after this next as best uh, we can. We'll see after the rain tonight what what it's going to look look like, and then hopefully we'll, this rain's done. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, couple other notes, uh, we uh, put uh, 24 tons of uh, field dry on the, uh, out at the uh, athletic complex on the four uh, ball fields, uh, did some other grading on them, added some sand and dirt and some low spots, had that done. Um, we have a, uh, I think it's a 45 team uh, girls uh, softball tournament out at the park this uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday that we're going to be getting re uh, ready for uh, starting tomorrow. We've got to put temporary fence up and a few other things for them. Uh, get that ready. Uh, like I say, soccer's uh, going on. Um, they have the Marine Corps League. will be at the cemetery uh, this Saturday to do some more headstone cleaning. Uh, they uh, talked to me about that. And I said, I wel welcome them up there. And uh, next uh, meeting, uh, we'll be having the uh, poster contest uh, winners for the uh, tree si or for the uh, Ar Arbor Day uh, tree giveaway from the schools. We'll have those uh, uh, w winners here for the, uh, the uh, so the mayor can uh, have take a picture with them, and we'll probably have the uh, posters up like we did uh, before. We'll have those here, and uh, last Friday, uh, kind of a thing for us, uh, uh, for the city, uh, we received our 12-year uh, Tree City uh, certification. So we've been a Tree City uh, every year since I started with this, that, that we, we've made it uh, each, each year. So that's a pretty big accomplishment for the city. I agree. So. Hey Brad, I got one question while you're talking about trees. Uh, I noticed in Binkley Park, you guys have a lot of trees with X and stuff. That yeah, they're getting down. ready to come down. We I got, we got. That's going to happen. Yeah, they, they're those are dead, and we we just got to get them out. And we meant to do it this winter, but things just didn't work out. We got kind of busy, so we got to let the ground kind of sure. firm up. We have a gentleman that's uh, going to take them down for us and haul them away and stuff. So it's going to should work out pretty good. But there are some that have to come down. We've cut a couple of them down that yeah, we deem. Lake that yeah, like we've got a couple of those big, bigger ones down there. We were kind of worried about them. We had some stuff calming down, so we took them down. But uh, something this this big, that many, we'd rather have them come up there. And I mean, he's he's a lot logger. That's who the state uh, forestry uh, re uh, recommended. And I think John uh, talked to him and stuff, and kind of worked out a thing with him. And so that's as soon as it dries up a little bit, we'll have him up there and start getting them out. Brad, I got a question. I just wondered if you could give me an update on the uh, goal building you guys were doing. Well, I, I guess I didn't realize that. Uh, I thought I was still waiting on the metal, but if it's here, we'll we'll start on it. We just got to get the ball stuff. This the tournament kind of popped up on us. We got to get that, but we'll probably get be our next. We're going to let the the uh, remodel set for a while. We're far enough. We're we're kind of waiting on other stuff, so we'll probably jump on that and get those uh, built and get them out there. Okay. So I think I think Johnny, the all the metals here is that. I think so. Yeah. I mean, if it's not, it's. I haven't heard, but we'll we'll, we'll 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 get on it. I haven't Thank seen you. it. Any other questions? Thank you, Brad. Next one here from Public Works Director uh, Guy Jeevers. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, you had my monthly report. Uh, had a water main break in Morgan. Heard a couple of water shutoffs. Uh, we replaced uh, two big water meters. We had three sewer calls. All three were on the city. So we took care of them. Any questions off my monthly report? No. Okay, I got a few. Can I ask for no money? <laughs> Few other items. Uh, update on the Fairlane Wastewater Treatment Plant Sewer Interceptor. Um, right now the contract is in Orange Blossoms and the Force Mains is completed. Um, the Wastewater Treatment Plant UV Disinfection System, the equipment is in. Uh, they're doing electrical work now and they'll have some more dirt work that will need to be completed. So they're moving along real well on that. 
The uh, stormwater improvement on for West Boone Slick contractor did the finished grading with the seed and straw. Uh, we did a walkthrough. There's some other work that they need to do before we uh, accept it, and they did grind that hump out off of Boone Slick and got rid of that. So they're waiting for it to dry out and they can finish a little bit of dirt work. They didn't have a whole lot more to do. Uh, on the CIP, CIP pipelining rehab, all the five points repairs have been completed and they're looking to start on April 11th to start lining that pipe, weather permitting. Uh, on the industrial park water painting, um, utility service will be mobilizing uh, this week just to get ready to start working on that. And then for the water line projects on Vosso, Tomahawk, and Hawthorne, the bid opening for that is April 14th. Any questions? I have nothing. Nobody else. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you guy. <coughs> Bill's ordinance. Uh, entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 19 22. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Crump. In ordinance of the City of Orton, amending section 210.710 regarding the use and sales of fireworks. I'll entertain a motion for the second, second reading of Bill number 19 22. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter. Ordinance of the City of Morton amending section 210.710 regarding the use and sales of fireworks. We'll call vote. Alderman Jaspring? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Bill passed 6 to 0. I entertain a motion for first reading of Bill number 20 22. So moved. Second. Who was the first one? Was it Alderman Delaware? Motion made by Alderman Delaware, second by Alderman Crump. In ordinance of the City of Morton amending sections 135.150, 135.160, 135.220, and 150.080 regarding municipal court operations. I'll entertain a motion for a second reading of Bill number 20 22. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Jaspring. In ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending sections 135.150, 135.160, 135.220, and 150.080 regarding municipal court operations. We'll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspring? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. I'll entertain a motion for first reading of Bill number 21 22. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Crump. In ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending section 705.250 and enacting section 705.255 regarding water meters and service lines responsibilities. I'll entertain motion for second reading of Bill number 21 22. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, second by Alderman Cullum. <coughs> In ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending section 705.250 and enacting section 705.255 regarding water meters and service lines responsibilities. We'll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspring? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. So before we proceed to the next bill, which will be 22-22, I'm going to read this right. I believe it'll be with the amendment of removing section 5 altogether and changing the wording from D4 to D5 subsection. Is that correct? That's correct. Was there any other changes that we had discussed? I, I had an opportunity while you guys were meeting to look up the width and size. Uh, so Washington has the same size as what we've proposed, what's currently our code. Uh, the statute has been updated in 2021, and Wright City has the updated one, so it would be for all-terrain vehicles, dry, unladen dry weight of 1,500 pounds. For recreational vehicles, it is uh, no more than 80 inches and 3,500 unladen drown weight, dried weight or unladen dry unladen dry weight. I had it right the first time. And then utility vehicles is the same thing, 3,500 pounds and 
uh, 80 feet in width. That have been a, been a minimum state. That's what the statute says. So how about we just include this as to amend the consistent with state statute. consistent with state statute sure. on yeah. the weight and and with restrictions <coughs> in the UTVs. And we're lighting the. I think it's subsection. All that, that's I think the yeah. section yeah. five. Section okay. Five. Really does okay. It. Cool. All right. So I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 22-22 with the amendments of removing section five altogether and changing the wording from subsection or from D4 to D5 subsection and abiding by all state regulations from the update of 2021 for width and weight of UTVs. So Second. Motion made by Alderman McCollum, seconded by Alderman Quarter. An ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending Chapter 340 of the Municipal Code regarding utility and recre recreational off-highway vehicles. I'll entertain motion for a second reading of Bill Number 22-22. Do I have to include the amendments? Chris? Uh, as amended. With all previously said yeah, amendments. as amended. So moved. Second. Motion made by, um, I'm sorry, who was it? Oh, Schultz. Alma Crump, second by Alma Schultz. An ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending Chapter 340 of the City Code regarding utility and recreational off-highway vehicles. Roll call vote. Um, Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. We'll pass the 6-0 to include the amendments. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 23-22. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Delaway, signed by Alderman Jaspering. In ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending Section 145.140 regarding sale price of grave sites. Our intent motion for a second reading of Bill Number 23-22. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, signed by Alderman Crump. In ordinance of the City of Warrenton amending Section 145.140 regarding sale price of grave sites. We'll call vote. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Jaspering. Yes. Alderman Deloy. <coughs> yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. We'll pass the six to zero. I entertain a motion to close the regular board of alderman meeting and go into executive session for personnel issues. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Porter. Roll call vote. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Jaspering. Yes. Alderman Deloy. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. We have so adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you.